Hello, and welcome to another episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. And this one is a relatively short video. There's no Kevin today, and I've just stuck to the program, whereby this little vehicle is one of the ones that I do not have in my collection. Remember, I want one of each of the original 175 models. This one here happens to be the number 17A, the Bedford's removal van, and it came out get a load of this in 1956 so this one's had 64 years of play there's a few variations not only in the colors but also the configuration of the cab and the rear container some of them have got like varying amounts of filler behind the cabin there they also came out in three colors this green a different green <laughs> that's four colors and blue and burgundy Sometimes they had a silver grill and bumper bar. Sometimes the grill was gold. A nice little model nonetheless and very simplistic. So it shouldn't take me too long to fix this one up. So as always a close up inspection. You can see the previous owner painted this silver and black. Doesn't look that good, must admit. There's even a bit of red on the front tire there. The axles are rusty, the rear one's bent. There's an A pillar on the cabin here missing. So I'll have to fix that. The rest of it's all a little bit shabby. It's supposed to have some decals on the side. The rear is squeezed in a little bit like it's been dropped once too often. The only markings on this model are inside where it says Lesney England. There's no number on the base. Anyway, to start with, I'm going to take the wheels off now these axles are so grotty I've decided I'm going to replace them flat out so I'm going to cut these off very carefully with this rotary cutting disc in my Dremel and I'm going to be extremely precise so I don't damage the underside of the model so I haven't cut this all the way through and I just use metal fatigue to finish the, the end of it off by flexing it a little bit so it breaks in the middle where I've cut it. The back one didn't spin as freely as the front one because it's bent. But I, so I, I just very, very gently go down as far as I think I need to go. And flex it with a flat bladed screwdriver just to make it break in the middle. There we go. Now I can pull these out and chuck them away. Not the wheels, the axles. And this is ready for paint stripping. Before I do that, I'm looking at these wheels. And this is the first time I realise they've been painted silver. If you look on the inside, there's supposed to be this dark grey. Anyway, because I've cut those axles off, I look in my axle box and I find two suitable replacements. They're both similar lengths actually just over length which is great because I've got to crimp the ends again to make them look original and I just put those tires on to see if they're the right length and they are there's plenty there for me to crimp so that's a good thing so I'll set those aside until later I'm going to chuck these wheels in this ultrasonic cleaner hopefully remove that silver paint and some of the grime that's on them and prepare them for repainting. So whilst those wheels are cleaning in the ultrasonic cleaner, I thought I would use this paint stripper to strip the model of its paint. Now I'm running out of this stuff, so I'm having to be very frugal with it. So today for a change, I'm applying it with a paintbrush which I don't usually do. Now it reacts really well with the black paint. However, the green paint is, seems to be almost unaffected by it, which is not unusual for these old models. I don't know whether it's to do with the lead content of the paint or what, but they do seem resistant to modern day paint strippers. Normally when I push it with the paintbrush, the whole thing would come off, as you've probably seen in some of my previous videos. 
However, this one is putting up more resistance than normal. And I have to repeat the process a couple of times and also hit it with a wire brush. Here is my copy of Roger Darkins' Matchbox Regular Wheel Series Variations Catalogue. And it shows the four different colours there. There's a dark green and a lighter green. So I'm going to go with the lighter green or the darker green. I'm not sure yet. I'll see what it turns out like when I mix it up. So I've got some thinners, some Tamiya X15, some Tamiya Dark Green XF. 70. The XF means it's flat by the way, so matte paint. So I'm mixing matte and gloss, which is probably not the best practice, but it's all the paint I've got. And if it looks a little bit dull at the end of it, I can always give it a spray of some clear coat. So we'll mix it up and see what it looks like. Anyway, I reach a point where I'm comparing it to the original model, and I'm thinking in my mind, maybe a little bit of blue should go into it too. So I add some of this Tamiya Blue. I think I've got the, um, the colour right, it's just the shade is incorrect. So I have to dilute it down with some white. And then I reach a point where I think I'm pretty close to where I want to be. Just dab a little bit on there and you can see it looks slightly lighter but from past experience I've noticed that paint dries one shade darker than what it looks when it's wet. So I'm hopeful that this is going to be a close match. So here's all the colors that I used. Now I've got this little bench top chuck and I whacked the axles in it and I cleaned them up with some fine emery paper and some steel wool and they absolutely look magnificent. They look like they're chrome plated. I fished these wheels out of the ultrasonic cleaner and I'm using some thinners there just to clean them of all of the ultrasonic cleaner cleaning solution which is a little bit greasy to the touch don't know whether it's high in detergents or what but uh, they look pretty good but as I anticipated I'm gonna have to give them a bit of a coat of a paint just to make them look new again so I've got this little device here made from a piece of polystyrene and some toothpicks. I've used it before, you can see there's some overspray on it from before when I've used it. And I'm just sticking it in my spray booth there. And I'm going to paint these with this Mr. Hobby 306, which is a fairly dark grey. And I'm hopeful that they're going to look nice and new when I finish. Of course this is only a, a 30 second job but the time is really taken in cleaning the, the spray gun after every use. That is always a very time consuming thing and it's something that I don't often show and I'm not going to show it today either but it's something to keep in mind. People go oh why don't you punch out more of these each week. Well there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that you don't see and it all takes time. So for this A pillar, I'm going to use one of these cotter pins, or as I call them, split pins. Because they have a half moon shape, like what the front side is curved and the back side is flat. A bit like my wife. No, I shouldn't say that. Anyway, I'm going to cut this piece, one of these legs to length, and glue it in there with some, the old favorite super glue and baking soda which I liken to chemical welding. It provides a very strong bond and it's almost instantaneous. And it's a great uh, tool to have in your belt when you're doing these kind of tiny little repairs on things. Still a little bit too long that one, so I cut it again. And then because I want it to fit in there nicely, I'm just grinding down the end here with this grinding disc so that I've got a flats on both ends rather than that tapered cut end from the action of the side cutting pliers. I've dispensed some super glue on the base of this little shot glass that I've got here and then I can just dip the part in there and position it. I'm using the helping hands there 
which I usually use when I'm soldering something. But today I'm using them to hold this vehicle because I need both hands at the ready to simultaneously hold this part in position and sprinkle some baking powder on it. So that's one end, now I've got to do the other end. That's a little bit easier because the piece is already in position. So you use the runny, thin viscosity superglue so it runs in the gap. And then just a, a liberal sprinkling of the baking soda, you just blow off the excess. And already it's looking good. It just needs a little bit of a clean up with some very small files. And it's gonna look a million dollars, I'm sure. Well, hmm, probably not, 50 cents. So the key here is uh, not just to remove the excess, but to get a nice sharp angle in the corner where it joins the original model. Because under the zoom of the camera, you're gonna see it if it's not right. So I'm using a very small square file there, rat tail file maybe you'd call it, I don't know. No, I think the rat tail's around, this is a four square. Uh, just try and get it looking good. Uh, after that, I undercoat it and just check for any obvious imperfections or gouges, etc., that may need filling. So now that I notice the tailgate is rather unusual, it's hinged at the top and there's a kind of a retention spigot on the bottom there. I don't know why. It adds no play value whatsoever and it's just a little bit complicated, I I'm assume, to assemble. There's also an unusual mark at the top of the cabin there that I left there. It looks like a, a machining mark of some description. There's also one on the front axle there of the same exact diameter. So if you know what caused those, let me know. I'm holding the model with some forceps and a toothpick through the axle hole. That way I'm going to get 100% coverage of this green paint. Usually I hold them by the axle mount and then I touch them up with a paintbrush at the end but today I thought I'd do something slightly different, speed things along. Make sure I'm doing the inside too. So as you saw there I sprayed the inside of the rear because on the original the interior was green also. Now that's the first coat, it does look thin but rest assured I give it a couple more coats set it up there to dry, air dry initially and then to harden it off so that I can handle this model because I've got to put some decals on here I stick it in my little mini toaster and set it on the minimum temperature for maybe 10 minutes even the minimum temperature though you still have to use a oven glove or similar to take this tray out because it's just too hot to handle so here's all the parts ready to go back together. And what's this? Yes, decals. I bought some decals. I've had these sitting around for maybe three months now. I've been trying to get onto this. They came from recovertoy.com. But before I put the decals on, I want to finish the model. So I'm going to refit the wheels. Then I'm going to paint the grill on the front bumper and then I'm going to put the decals on. To simulate the crimped ends of the axles, I'm using these multi-grips, which are self-locking pliers, and I've ground the teeth off the end, so that when you crimp them, it makes for a nice flat crimp, very similar to the original. And there's a close-up of that, that's the front wheel. I think I chipped the paint there, so I'm going to have to touch it up anyway. And that's the rear wheel. Now remember, that is a hundred times magnification. So the real thing looks absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to paint the grill. Now, as I said, they came out in silver and gold. The very rare ones had a gold grill, apparently. So I'm going with silver now to dumb it down a little bit and make it look more original. And I don't use the chrome paints very often these days. I use this rather dull looking silver. It's a silver ink pen by Pentel. 
and I think that the the silver finish is more accurate and mimics the original model rather than those high-tech chrome pens that you get these days. So I've just done the grill and the front bumper bar there and it dries really quick this stuff too so it's a great thing. Now I just moisten the side of the model and dunk these decals in some lukewarm water. And I, I'm really sort of nervous now because I'm, I can see light at the end of the tunnel. But sometimes the decals are the hardest part of the build. This one is no exception because they're quite large. I made the mistake there. Not really a mistake, it's something that I usually do. I just move the decal to see if it has detached from the backing paper. But in doing so, the left hand edge has folded under on itself. And it's round about now that I realize, so far I'm thinking, oh, that looks good. And then I can see the bottom left hand side there of that decal is actually double thickness. It's, it's folded over itself. So I have to run it off the back of the vehicle and then drag it back on in the hope that it flattens out. But in doing so, I also create problems at the other side, the front end. Uh, you, can, you can't tell now, but I'm thinking, oh no, please, 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 please work. Because if I have to order these decals, I, I can't possibly print white because I don't have the means and my printer doesn't have white ink. But whose printer has white ink? Not mine, that's for sure. So after a moment of panic, I kind of get, I, I, I managed to recover. So after my recovery, I now use a cotton bud just to roll the decal to squeegee out any excess moisture from underneath the decal. And then as a finishing touch, I like to dab it down to press it home against the, the vehicle, against the surface that it's gluing to, to make sure that there are no air bubbles and that it's as good as it's going to get. So here's a little reminder of what we started with. Quite a sorry looking truck, really. Definitely needed the makeover. There's no way known I could have put this on display. And this is what it looks like now. And this is an absolute beautiful little tiny trinket sized model. Smaller than your usual matchbox in actual fact. It's a very cute thing. And I think it turned out really good. I do love it. Not too sure the font on the decals is as accurately reproduced as maybe it should have been. But there you go. They're the only ones you can get as far as I'm aware. So you've got to make do with what you can get. Unless you've got a printer that can print white decals, you're pretty much stuck. Now I'm showing it in all its glory alongside the other vehicles of a similar type. And they are the number 46A Pickford's Removals vans. And they came out in three colors, blue, green, and a light brown special edition for Beals Bealsons, which is... If you ever find a light brown one, snap it up because they're worth a lot of money. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. But I thought I'd just stick to a basic makeover and a basic model. And it was a refreshing change for me with very little stress. And I actually smashed this out of the park in just a couple of days, which makes me feel great. So until next time, this is Marty from Marty's Matchbox Makeovers saying goodbye and thanks for watching.